Today it's five great things to practice on guitar to really level up your playing. Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen. It's good to have you along. You can call me this guy if my name is tricky to pronounce. Today it's what to practice. Two weeks ago it was how to practice. Today it's what to practice. Number one, work on those bends. But I know bends can be a bit frustrating, especially when you're starting out. Now there's a great trick if your bends are a bit wonky to start out with bends. That sounded weird. <laughs> and it's this. The great thing about this is that you don't really have to hit that certain note, that one, with the bend. You can actually just... But it gets you into that kind of motion. You can do a different version of this with... Or... Or... And then you can tune your guitar. And then you can go on to when you're getting kind of the hang of it, you can go on to actually practicing hitting certain notes, um, maybe adding vibrato to it. And you can combine it with that one thing that I said two weeks ago in how to practice that uh, you measure your progress by recording yourself. That will give you added motivation to keep practicing those bends when you notice that you've actually made steps forward, made progress. Number two, you might be practicing this. Why not do variations on that? You could do it backwards. You could do uh, a variation which I've actually done quite a lot, which I really like which is uh, a new finger starts every new string. So it's uh, index finger, ring finger, <coughs> index finger, middle finger, ring finger, uh, little finger, like this. Rinse and repeat. Just to give you kind of uh, some added variety into your practice while still practicing this basic hand synchronization thing. You can make that as fast as you want or as slow as you want. Another thing would be to do this. so on. So you do the regular kind of spider thing, but you, you alternate strings. And you play this, record this and release that on Spotify and no one will listen to it. <laughs> or you can do string skipping. Again, alternate strings. And you can come up with your own variations. Just to spice things up in case you're getting a bit bored of that regular spider exercise. Number three. Now, this is something I've done huge amounts. Because I improvise all of my solos, most of them, basically all of them. And you won't improve your improvising unless you practice improvising. Now, I would recommend that you do this over some sort of backing track because that gives you a musical context, a musical setting, so it's not just random notes being played. That's not very useful, it can be fun, but it's not very useful. It's much more useful that you put it in some sort of musical setting and practice your improvisation Take your licks and improvise with them. Learn new licks, improvise with them. It will really sound terrible when you start, but it will get better. And again, record yourself on occasion so that you notice your progress. Number four, radio or Spotify playlist transcribing. I would say transcribing uh, is a great thing to do anyway, but this kind of thing would be where you turn on the radio, they are playing a song, 
that you don't know and you start figuring out the chords on the go. It can be really tricky to start with, but you will get better at it. And that will improve your ear and your ear is... that's where music enters you. Your ear is so important, your ears. You being able to recognize different uh, intervals and all that kind of stuff, it's so useful. So just turn on a radio station with some whatever music. If you want to start off easily, just take uh, something that plays pop music, because those songs are usually really simple. Four chords. But that's really useful stuff. Number five scales and modes. But not just practicing scales and modes the way we sometimes do, this way. So we might play the C major scale. But the C major scale, and every scale, we should know, not just this way, in that little box, but this way as well. So what if we practiced the C major scale like this? Then you have it on one string, then you can practice it on... Well, you do the same thing, rinse and repeat on all strings. And you do different scales. You can do every scale in G. So when you learn your scales this way, not just this way, it frees you up so much. Uh, it gives you the fretboard layout in a way uh, that you won't get otherwise. And above all, you just have huge amounts of fun with playing. And it will help your transcribing when you know scales and modes. If you haven't watched the video on how to practice, it's here. Come join me on Patreon, you get access to all of my music, lessons and exclusives. There's a link in the description so that you can even take it for free. Other than that, I hope you have a nice day. Take care. Bye!